two. Welcome back, WNST Towson Baltimore and WNST Baltimore positive and nothing more Baltimore positive than this crew here. I'm, I'm just going to get out of the way. I'm just going to get out of the way. <laughs> no, no, no. You, the way you describe positive is, is, is positive. Okay? Oh, you think so? Are yes, sir. You, yes, right, sir. Well, I, I'll here. go for that. We are at Fadley's. We are at Lexington Market, and uh, we are with a guy that 28 years of radio. I've never had you on my show. That's a fact. Is How that can so? that be? Well, he was, was, really was my pace too high? Or no, you were just <laughs> really, really busy. You my were busy being back zero. In the day. Okay. <laughs> well, but but you were you, you were busy back in the days. Right, of Nestor, who are we are we talking well, to? This the is legendary, the legendary the one and Ange Pyro here with us at, at Fadley's, and uh, y you guys know each other well. So this is going to yeah. be. I know Don well. I know you professionally. <laughs> we have spoken many times. We know each other. But I've never sat down for an hour. And, and Don's written the questions down. And I don't even want to mess with it because he just. Listen, you can jump in anytime you want. It's time right. for us to catch up. <laughs> it okay? is time for us We're to catch up. First of all, how are you? You look yeah. phenomenal, man. Well, you know, when you get to be <laughs> old by me, you just say stop. <laughs> Nestor makes fun of me, Ron, every week. You will, you love, he makes fun of my. My copious mm. notes and my preparation. And I tell him, it comes right out of the power of nice. So you don't show up without some preparation. Well, remember, I wrote a book, Dare to Prepare, too. And <laughs> you to always prepare. dare to prepare. So. Dare to prepare. Yeah. Well, no, no question. In the modern era, where are you? What are you doing? How are you, know, you affecting this, the world? Write this, books? This, this has been an amazing life. I've got lots of chapters. And whether it was uh, law or sports or teaching or negotiations or community, family uh, or the world, I, I just had an opportunity to do a lot of things. I would say right now I'm at a consolidation stage. I've taken all the experience I've gotten in the various areas I've been in. And, I, you know, to me, it's all about uh, an old quote by Winston Cur Churchill. You make a living by what you get. You make a life by what you give. And I'm in the major giving stage. I hope I always gave. But I'm taking the experience I have and trying to guide people uh, in their lives, guide organizations in their lives, not because they can afford me, but because they have a need. Well, the, the, and so that's what I'm doing primarily Having now. abundance is a beautiful yeah, thing, yeah, right? Yeah, and it, to be able to share that. Yeah, and, and it's never been, I have to tell you, Nestor, a lot of people, I negotiated for athletes. I negotiated contracts, but it's never been about the money for me. It's, it's been about the opportunity to do, be, and affect people. Uh, and that's why I say it's been a great ride. Now it's just magnified. And I decided when I crossed the, the 70 line that I'd keep going, and then I'd assess again at 80. Here I am at 76. I, I get up at uh, 4 in the morning. I go to the gym. I well, go you to and the Nestor office. have that in common. Okay. You're 4 in the morning, go, guys. Go, go, to the, go to the office. <laughs> I sleep a little, eat I, I, well. No, no, I do sleep. I've never I take physically a nap seen or two. you. Look, okay. You look Are you in the gym? Yeah, you yeah, look the gym strong. Every morning. But, but the point is that, that it's, it's being out there for others and – Trying to also guide the next generation of family. I now have 11 grandchildren. Wow. You know, the oldest is 21. One was 17 yesterday. I was talking to him. And wanting to transmit by my actions values to them so that they can make whatever difference they can in the world. That's what it's all about. We can talk more about where in the world I've been, but... That's the broad Only answer. sports for the end. We did yeah. the cast earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, but I, I want to talk to you about the video you sent me from the 94 strike okay. and where the Orioles are going. But I think we're on the, the bigger things here with Baltimore yeah. Positive. I mean, you've been here a long time, and the city has some challenge. We, we're, we're trying to make the place better. We're all trying to make the place better. Well, go ahead, Ryan. No, you go ahead, Don. No, I was going to say, I'm, I'm fascinated as we get into all that. And one of the things when we're talking to just great people, I, I joked with Nestor again today, looked at your bio, cum laude from uh, Harvard Law. I said to Nestor, we're, we're only interviewing, it seems like, five Beta Kappas and cum laude's. And I joked that Nestor and I were somehow in another room when all that was happening. So really smart people like yourself. And here I you never are. thought I was smart, by the way. Well, I, And that's, by the way, why that, I, 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 I work so hard. You know, I... I never thought I was smart. I thought I was lucky. I got into places that, you know, gave me some sort of identity. But I wrote a book, Dare to Prepare, and that was all about if you're not the smartest guy in the room, be the best prepared guy in the room. If you, you, know, if you can outprepare them, you can outperform them. That's a sports metaphor, sure. too. And, and so... Bill that, Ripken did that. That, that, you know, that, that, <laughs> yeah. is, that is how I uh, approach things. Well, when, when, when you say that, Ron, I think about what I like to ask folks that we talk with is how their background 
you know, how the past is prologue, how their background sort of contributed to who they became. Now, you're, you're this young kid, parents Mark and Lillian Shapiro, outside of Philadelphia in Cheltenham. When you look back at your childhood and your mom and dad, you, what you, were the you, lessons? You, you hit such an important point because I sent an email to all my children and grandchildren yesterday with an article from The Sun this weekend attached. And it was about families in Baltimore. I came from Philadelphia, so it wasn't geographically mm -hmm. exact. Who came from Russia during the persecutions in the early 20th century when the Tsar decided that all Jews ought to be gone, mm -hmm. dead, killed. Uh, and they escaped. They left as immigrants. They came to Philadelphia, but the article was about Baltimoreans who did it. But I wanted my kids to see same a story. story. Sure. Same story. Um, and my dad came to Philadelphia. His parents said, Mark, his name was Mark, as my oldest son's name is Mark, you, uh, you're going to have to leave school. We need you to earn a living. And at seventh grade, he was selling wow. papers on the street, ultimately sold newspaper, uh, encyclopedias as well. And at least he had the sense to read them all. S sold and knowledge. He, he got an education yeah. from the knowledge he sold. By the time he was in his 20s, people thought he had degrees, you know. And you know, I said to my dad once, Dad, how did you do this? And he said, you know, to me, the glass was always half full. Whatever the challenge, I wasn't going to look at it as a setback. I was going to look at it as, as an opportunity. And that glass half full philosophy has guided me in virtually everything I've done. That perseverance has guided me in everything I've done. And you talk about mothers and fathers. And my mom's being there as a, as a source of support and encouragement. We're all the difference makers. So I'm, I'm one of the lucky guys. We look out here and we look in a community that, that is challenged right now. Uh, and, and I think of my son David, who's the leader of the mentoring movement in the United States. And why does he lead the mentoring movement? Because he believes that he had family relationships that allowed him to be encouraged and move forward. And there are a lot of young people in the world who don't have those kind of relationships. And if we can find mentors, and I know I'm jumping from no, no, father please. to well, son. Well, he was my mentor. Okay, okay. We, we never and, go in a and, straight and, line. And, and, and Nestor, you think about what a difference that oh, made. Oh, I think about it every and, day. This is your last nine so, months. So I had <laughs> the greatest relationships in family to encourage me. And lo and behold, there's David Shapiro out there leading mentoring in the United States um, because he believes that kids who don't have that kind of home can still do great things if they're given the power of a relationship to support them. Well, Ron, Does that explain uh, it? Oh, my goodness, okay. Ron. It's, it's yeah. so interesting yeah. because we are going to, about two weeks, I think you probably know her or have crossed paths, we're going to have Sarah Heminger on oh, from say, Thread. You, you say hello to Sarah and you ask Sarah the question, tell us about David Shapiro. Okay, okay. we will. We, because, again, let, let's think about this. If you and I and the people listening could all grab people and mobilize mentors and turn them on to kids who would otherwise be ambling through the streets and making mistakes and doing damage and getting caught up in the wrong thing, Man, we, we, could, we could make a positive turn with this city. And, and I'd like to Thank see you. a program in this city that's called Baltimore Men. There's all kinds. Sarah's, Nestor's going to take all, notes. All probably. kinds of organizations. Right now, but, yes. but if a leader came along and said, I want 10,000 mentors for 10,000 kids, I'm telling you, we could begin to make a dent in what goes on here. That, that's a big issue. Baltimore um, positive. You know, okay. you know, there was a video. Nestor, I don't know if you saw it. Ron, I know you've been traveling. There was a video that surfaced this week on Facebook, and I know people have a lot of different feelings about Nick Saban, but it was Saban in response to a question yeah. about whether he bent over backwards to give a kid a break after a kid made a mistake. And it was, it should be It was Moussin Muhammad, the, it, the former wide receiver from the Carolina Panthers yeah. in the 90s, that when he was 18, 19 years old, he had some problems and they quit on him. And now he's a, you know, 50, he's my age and he's done all, all these contributions. Made a difference in society. I, mean, I saw Warwick done this. Athletes giving back is, you know, I see Lee Steinberg every year. You guys were the originators But, but of that. remember, Lee went off the path. He got, he got arrested for drugs. Oh, he got in all kinds of... Sure. But he had someone there to support him. 
and help bring him back, okay? And that, that's what I'm, I'm talking about. Nick Saban's a great example. My son-in-law, Eric Mangini, a former head coach in the NFL, he was worked with Nick at one time. He worked with uh, Belichick at one time. Parcells. Bill, Bill and Parcells, who's been... But Belichick is not a mentor. He is a great... He's a genius. He's a football genius. Nick has that mentoring in. He you has that. Tell. Parcells does too. And that's and an that interesting was, distinction. We, we, we really is. That, but that's what we look in pro football. I'm not worried about. It. They'll all do okay. But, but there's greatness but, in leadership across all uh, categories, and, well, the, and then there's strengths and weaknesses, right? And and we're also talking not just about coaches and famous people. We're talking about people who run businesses, people who 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 do good works, who aren't visible in the way that those folks are. We all have a responsibility here, gentlemen. We've got to assume it. You, you know, I remember when you talk, and, and Nestor, you, it's interesting, you wouldn't have been aware of this. Nestor was a student of mine at Dundalk High. But Five years a ago. Group, <laughs> I got a group, it. He told me. A group of teachers uh, were really motivated to, to make a difference for some at-risk kids at Dundalk who were seniors, kids who had had attendance problems. And at the beginning of the year, they came up with this idea that we implemented. And I, I want to say, if I remember, it may have been 25 kids. And they said, let's get 12 teachers, if we can get 25, who every morning will do nothing more Difference than makers. call the house and say, get up. Get up. And the mother said, you know, well, they're still in bed. Take the phone to them. Get up. I want to see you. I want to see you here right. in the next 10 or 15 minutes. The results... You, you know, of that program were <laughs> remarkable. Let, let, me, let me, you know, I talked about David leading mentoring. So one day I'm in Boston with David, and I said, where are we going? We're driving into the projects. You have a meeting here? He said, no, I have my mentee, Keontae. And this is a place where guns go off periodically, wow. okay? And this must be 11 or 12 years ago. And I said, David, how do you have time? You're running the... He said, Dad, i got to practice what I preach. But now I've watched Keontae come from the projects where drugs and guns and proliferate. And Keontae graduated college last, yeah. week, last year. Amazing. Keontae had, now why? Because there was someone there who cared. And someone who could say, hey, Keontae, you're on the wrong track here. Let's get on the right track. That's what we're looking for. So regardless. I, I'm, I'm giving you guys a challenge. And Go that ahead. is. And we, let, we did it right here at Fadley's. That's okay, the place to go. do I'll it. Amy okay. Hahn looking okay. on. She's taking let's, notes let's, as well. Let's, let, let's, the challenge is 10,000 Baltimore it. mentors. Let's get, and let's, let's assign them. Let's go to the teachers who care. Let's go to the schools. But you put them on at-risk kids, I promise you, I may be dead and gone, but you'll look at the statistics five years from now, and there will be a change. There will be a change. Because if you mentor 10,000 kids, those 10,000 kids may persuade one other not to do something. And that's the beginning of something. Well, and that's a lot cheaper than having to spend money on all kinds of infrastructure and law enforcement and well, other things. Like you, know why, okay. you know why it matters, Ron? And that's why I knew you were going to be a great guest. Because you've been making a difference for decades. It's Nestor and I talk... Uh, and Nestor uh, occasionally dabbles with whether his way to make a difference is to run for public office or not run for public office. But what we talk about is when people talk about what are obvious issues in the city, whether you've got, you know, a bunch of young men at the corners, the squeegee kids, sort of intimidating people, or whether they're kids on dirt bikes, what that is to me, is a result of not having 10,000 men. I'm, I'm telling you guys, it, it, it's, it's, it's a difference maker, okay? So uh, at least it creates an opportunity to change a direction. Well, how does okay? your son's program, t- I mean, I'm well, fast. Do, do, well, I'm, how I'm, does it work, I'm, You want Ryan. David on this show, not me. I'll call him and we'll call we'll him. get, get him me off? off the air right now. But the I bottom line is. I got nothing but air time. Okay, That's all okay. I have. But we'll get so, David so, on it. So yeah. you'll send him this and you'll, this will be the invitation. David is, is CEO of the National Mentoring Partnership. The National Mentoring Partnership is the group nationally that coordinates all, whether it be boys and girls clubs, whether it be Sarah's program, they coordinate all the mentoring efforts in this country. They go to Congress and they ask for the dollars to train people as mentors. So they're the advocacy group. They, they also mentor, but, but it's all these other groups. So David took a, a, a bankrupt organization, brought it back to life. Dur- there's David. During the last administration 
uh, got, got a program created federally called My Brother's Keeper. Um, should be my brothers and sisters mm-hmm. keeper. I'll tell David that. <laughs> but but the bottom line is that that's what it's all about, and it works. It works every day. David tweets, I tweet, but every day David's tweets are about another success story. And well, and I'll it, start following and, David. And, 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 org. And Mentoring and dot org. Mentoring is, is the website. Yeah, but yeah. I'll give you one quick sports story, and then you can get. get Bill Russell is a man who who feels somewhat alienated for lots of reasons because he suffered prejudice even though he was in the NBA and was the ultimate star like few people have. And he disconnected from a lot of things in Boston and a lot of things elsewhere until he found Mentor. Wow. And now, now he is one of David's advocates and leaders. But it took him a long time until he became a believer in something that could make the difference in the life of at-risk kids. Last, last point before we go yeah. to break, and, okay. I, and I know we have a, a hard stop today and, yeah, and really yeah. appreciate your time. Yeah. Ron, in everything you do, anyone that's ever met you, there is this, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to oversell, but there's a sense of commitment to social justice, of the fact that, don't you, you mentioned it called half empty, half full. Things can be better. My guess is when you look at Baltimore City, you're not dwelling on all the problems. You believe this is a great uh, hey, city. Hey, listen, listen. <laughs> I saw it. I came here when Baltimore was down in the dumps. What brought I, you here, I by came, the way? Why, uh, why uh, here? A job in law and a wife who had family here. Okay? But you, you had visited and, Baltimore and or had never really been I, here? I had been here. You know when I came? Uh, I came to see a baseball game of or course two, you okay? did. <laughs> but, but the bottom line they didn't is have American that, you know, the, you know, <laughs> the bottom line was that, that uh, I came here to work for a federal judge. He had persuaded me to work for him. My, my wife had family here. They persuaded me to come. I came, I graduated law school in 1967. Okay, so, so I came, and, and I got involved with a, a guy as a co-law clerk named Larry Gibson. Mm-hmm. And Larry Gibson is a game changer. He works at that law school down the street. Safe to say that you guys were on the inside and advisors of lots of political leaders along the way. Political leaders, but in the early days, we were involved in the in the civil rights housing movement. Mm-hmm. Baltimore was a segregated city. There were apartment buildings that absolutely said no blacks. Okay, before that they said no Jews, but then it right. was no blacks. And Larry and I sued housing developments. We sued apartment buildings. And we were in advocates in the in the civil rights movement. But through Larry, I I got another pair of eyes. I learned to look at the world, not as a white liberal uh, from Philadelphia who cared, but as a, 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 a as much as I could get into the skin of another person, into the skin of another person to see how. And he's such a positive guy, but he still gave me the story. And he's my best friend, by the way, to today, to this day. fifty years later. We are still. When's the best first time friends? you met him? I I, I, I have this dream I, to do a book called First Look, he, he, and it's when somebody says came, they're my best friend. I lived in an apartment on in uh, Bolton Hill uh, with with my wife and my newborn son, and this guy knocks on the door, and and we had called each other, and he says we're co clerks together for for the judge. Uh, let's study for the bar together, and that was in nineteen June of nineteen or Ju- so July. So he reached to you. Well, no, we reached to each Together, other, okay. but he get, made the call and came to the apartment because I was married and had a kid. He was still <laughs> unmarried. Um, but it's a, it's a great story, and it was a great opportunity and been an inspiration to, to this day. Wow. I, it's amazing. And then let you studying for the bar. Studying and then, the and then bar, later on, you write could, one of the first bar review courses I, in the state. Is well, that, do I, I, do I, I recall I, that correctly? I, I, I went to a bar review course with Larry, and... The guy who led it said, boys, I'm going to teach you. Boys. No women. <laughs> right, boys. Right, boys. A, that right off set me off. But he said, boys, I'm going to teach you the legal law. <clears throat> and I said, <coughs> anyone who says he's going to teach me the legal law may not be teaching me a whole lot. <laughs> and at the end of that bar <laughs> right. review course, I gathered some friends, and I created what became the biggest bar review course in Amazing. Maryland. Um, and we, we put it on for a few years. and. It made me learn a lot of law fast. Sure. So it made me a better lawyer initially. So, by the way, one of the things you learn, and I've done a lot of teaching in my days, is when you teach, you learn. There's no better school for anyone than to be a teacher. 
as a result no of being doubt. a teacher, you take knowledge away. Oh, you so are better, and I know we have to go to a yeah, break. Yeah. You are a better negotiator now because you've written so much about negotiation uh, because you teach it all over the world. Uh, maybe, but I'm, all, yes, that reinforces it, but I'm probably a better negotiator now because I always tell people, because I'm not the smartest guy in the room, I make my share of mistakes. Who's the greatest, what is the greatest teacher in the world? The mistakes we make. Right. And I have written books. People, I say to people, I've written books not because I'm the smartest, but because I've made more mistakes than most people. Now I can teach. And, but then from the teaching, I refine and I get better. So, yes, being a teacher has played a major role in my life. Great spot to take a break. Thank our sponsors, right? We were at Ruth's Chris last night. We're here at Fadley's. Jennings. Jennings State Fair. State Fair. Uh, it's interesting that Ron mentioned uh, Nestor, he'll be, he, I think he'd be interested. You mentioned the housing issues way back 50 years ago. Nestor is part of a conference being put on by our friends at Center Maryland. Uh, he's going to moderate a session on uh, so housing opportunity learn. today and housing <laughs> equity. It remains an issue. It's an Same issue. Story, no, 50 no, years no, later. no, Same no story. question. No, it's better. It's better. I will tell you, it's better. The signs aren't out. You know, no, no colored. You know, right. no Jews. No this. No that. But yes, it's still a challenge. Well, it's I remember vividly. My, my aunt and uncle lived at 612 Allendale Street just down the road from Edmondson Village. And I remember blockbusting like it was yesterday when people came and I, basically forced them to sell their homes. You yeah, remember the yeah, whole blockbusting scandals. I was involved in a, lot, a big case with that. So. Well, the event is September the 10th. Damien O'Darty, you can find it out at Baltimore Positive as well. Ron Shapiro, legendary negotiator, Baltimorean, and friend. We're going to get to some baseball, I promise. That'll make you we're happy, gonna, right? And we're going to talk a lot about the power of nice because I still think it's the best the best. We're, I got it right here's here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start the se best segment two book with on leadership. Win win relationship. Win win. That. Good. So we're going to do. Good. And, and Mr. President, if, if you're interested, it is available. Still, you can buy it on Amazon. <laughs> uh, you may want to have your staff pick it up for you. We are WNST.net. We are live at Fadley's in Lexington Market. Crab cakes are coming. Ron Shapiro is staying. And we are WNST.net, AM 1570, and WNST Towson, Baltimore. And we never stop talking. Baltimore Sports.